Hi, my name is Ellie Bradford and I am recording this for EDFD 546. Numerous modern views of effective teaching have been formulated of constructivist theories of learning. The primary assumption of constructivism is that knowledge is attained and understanding is developed through the effective building and rebuilding of mental frameworks. Killen discusses how learning cannot be an uninvolved inactive practice of merely receiving information. Instead, it requires calculated, continuous forming and expanding of meaning. This different or enhanced understanding depends on the evolution and creation of legitimate relationships between new and existing knowledges and experiences. The idea of constructivism and the development of understanding is supported by neurological research and by many authors. There are multiple interpretations of how constructivism can relate to education. It is suggested, however, that they all share four common principles. What a per number one. What a person knows is not just received passively, but is the result of the active creation of knowledge structures from personal experience. Number two. Because knowledge is the result of personal interpretation of experiences, one person's knowledge can never be totally transferred to another person. Number three. The cultures and societies to which people belong influence their views of the world around them and therefore influence what they know. And number four, construction of ideas is aided by systematic open-minded discussion and debate. So typically, the idea of constructivism is separated into three divisions. Cognitive constructivism, developed by Jean Peget, Social Constructivism by Lev Vygotsky and Radical Constructivism, developed by Ernst von Glasserfield. According to Vygotsky, learning and understanding is a cooperative process and knowledge evolves from a person's connections and dealings with their surroundings. Vygotsky suggests that every function in the child's cultural development appears twice. First, on the social level, and later, on the individual level. First, between people, inter-psychological, and then inside the child, intra-psychological. The primary role of a teacher who is engaged in a constructivist classroom is to provide students with the opportunity to collaborate in a problem-solving environment that engages them and helps them to become effective, enthusiastic, and dynamic contributors to their own learning. It is therefore the role of the teacher to act as an initiator, facilitator and guide of learning instead of an instructor. It is essential that the teacher understands the student's prior knowledge and pre-existing conceptions so that they can more effectively guide the learning and then build upon it. An excellent way to utilize constructivism in a contemporary classroom is through ICTs, that is information and communication technologies. I will now discuss three different ICTs that can be used to support constructivist approaches to learning and teaching, can be used to support and respond to the needs of diverse learners, and that can be implemented safely, responsibly, and ethically in secondary school classroom. The first ICT tool that I will be discussing is the online bulletin board Padlet. I'm just going to move myself down the bottom. Padlet is a web-based bulletin board that allows you to facilitate discussions on any given topic. Padlet supports a constructivist approach to learning by giving students their own platform to create and respond to stimulus, whether they are responding to a teacher's questions, reflecting on what they have learnt during a class, or even using the board to ask questions and further their own understanding. Padlet can be used to support and respond to the needs of diverse learners by including multiple different forms of information. Whether that is text, pictures, or videos, it allows students to explore a concept through various means. Padlet can also support diverse learners through the anonymous posting option. This allows students who are perhaps not as confident or who may have a learning disorder or be an EALD student to post their queries and thoughts without fear of judgment as their name is not attached to the post. As Padlet is online, it also corrects spelling, which once again supports diverse learners. This leads into Padlet's safe, responsible and ethical implementation into a secondary classroom. To ensure that no inappropriate is contact, 
inappropriate content is uploaded, and let's face it, high school students can be silly at times, if not malicious. The bulletin boards, or walls, on Padlet have both private or public settings, and each wall created can be set to a different privacy setting. Walls with a private setting can be created so that they require a password to access them, or they can be limited to registered users only, meaning that only specific emails can access the wall. The creator of the wall can also moderate all notes before they appear and adjust the privacy settings at any time. So if you look on the right here, you can change it, require a moderate to approve your post, and filter profanity. Padlet is free to use and technically you do not have to be a registered user to access the platform. It is recommended, however, that teachers using and creating walls are registered so that they can edit and moderate posts. The second ICT tool I would like to explore is Google Docs. Google Docs is another free internet-based app in which students can collaboratively work on a shared document and spreadsheets. Google Docs supports a constructive approach to learning as it is di designed to help facilitate collaborative projects in which multiple people can work together in real time. Uh, on the same document. Google Docs allows edits to be tracked and is an excellent way to track who is doing what work as all participants can see who made what changes in a document and at what time those changes were made. It also allows the sharing of pictures and videos as well as the opportunity for students to comment um, on the progress on the work as it progresses. Okay. Google Docs can be used to support and respond to the needs of diverse learners through the voice to text function as well as the grammar and spelling check. It also has screen reader and magnifying options for the visually impaired. Uh, so, due to the internet-based nature of Google Docs, there is some concern that the work may not be private or secure, although this can be counteracted by making the documents private, which means they require edits, editors to log in um, and be invited to edit the document and make changes. So, restricted, sorry, uh, restricted only people added can open with this link. Okay. Right, so the final ICT tool that I would like to be exploring is Kahoot. Kahoot is an online quiz platform that utilizes a student response system to help promote engagement, collaboration, and subject understanding. Kahoot facilitates active, un active learning and, and engagement by allowing students to respond to questions in real time. Kahoot also helps to promote and enhance higher order thinking skills and it has multiple settings that allow students to control their own learning and therefore assess and reflect on the understanding of a subject at the end of each game or self-paced module. Kahoot supports a constructivist approach to learning as it can be created by either a teacher and used as a tool of, of reflection and to grow on concepts learned or a student can be nominated as the expert and required to create their own quiz exploring a subject. Kahoot can also be played as an individual or in a team. Um, Kahoot can be played as a student paced challenge or as a learning challenge. As a framework of constructivist learning, Kahoot, Kahoot helps students to build upon their problem solving and collaborative skills as well as enhance their creative and critical thinking. Students can be encouraged to create their own Kahoot quizzes, either individually or in groups, to deepen understanding and mastery, as well as enhance collaboration, teamwork, and communication through Kahoot team mode. Uh, so Kahoot employs fun and bright graphics and audio to encourage students' engagement and can be used to support and respond to the diverse learning needs of students through visual and audio cues, as well as providing teachers with immediate feedback on how well a subject has been understood and if there are any gaps in knowledge that are required to be filled before progressing with the content. Kahoot can be safely, responsibly and ethically implemented into secondary classrooms through its various, various privacy settings. Kahoot quizzes can either be set to private or public and setting changes such as nickname generators ensures that no inappropriate nicknames or words are used throughout. For example, 
a nickname perhaps thought of by a 13-year-old boy gets changed. Uh, teachers can also delete out inappropriate names. So, as explored in this presentation, there are many effective ways that constructivism can be utilized and enhanced in the classroom through ICT use. Uh, thank you for listening and taking the time to watch my video.